The locals call this Bodens Pool, after the Germanic pagan god who was credited with creating earth, sky, man and woman. The water is the source of the River Lip, which flows from the spa town of Bad Lipspringer into the Rhine and the industrial areas of the Ruhr Valley. Today, it's a peaceful and prosperous little town, just as it was 60 years ago when Franz and Hilda Krissero arrived here with their 11 children. What began as a peaceful idyll became an epic battle between good and evil as the Kusseros defied Hitler and the Nazi regime. Franz and Hilda Kussero were married in 1911, three years before the Great War that traumatized Europe. Franz Kussero fought for his country, but his life and beliefs were transformed. The Kussero story has been lovingly chronicled by the eldest of the 11 children, Anne-Marie, now aged 78. Anne-Marie's parents were born into a comfortably off Protestant environment. But the First World War and a chance meeting with a Jehovah's Witness dramatically changed their lives. Franz, a post office clerk, and Hilda, a former school teacher, became full-time missionaries for the International Bible Students Association. They came to this house on the outskirts of Bad Lipspringer to set up congregations in North Westphalia. No Kusros live here today, but when members of the family do return, there are vivid memories. Magdalena is the Kusero's fourth daughter. What are your early memories of this house? Oh, it was so nice. We played here in the garden, and this little piece, and then there also we had some trees with apples and uh, some fruits. We had some potatoes, a salad, and different things. We played, we danced together, and then they took some flowers, they make a, a ring on the head. And then we went down with the geese to the river, to the ring, uh, river to bring the geese that they have to, they could. Swim? No, swim also, <laughs> yes, and we swim also. You took the geese for a swim? Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> and on the way, they took the grass and they ate, and we had many fun. Oh, you wait long It's a long time since I was here. Not since 1939, I think. The door seemed bigger then. Hans Werner, now 63, was the Kusero's 10th child. It was a very happy time, especially as I had so many brothers and sisters. Everything was happy until I went to school. That was bad, of course. Every day when children went to school, they thought in advance what will happen today, what will happen today. I remember many things. I remember how strong we were, how we didn't salute the flag, how we wouldn't say Heil Hitler, and how we acted a bit differently from other pupils. Some days were hard, the teacher was like a, like a devil, and he took my hand, he said, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, and beat me. Were you so frightened they would hit you? That you did you never say Heil Hitler? No, no, they never said. Because my father said, look, Heil Hitler means the salvation comes from Hitler. As we learn of the Bible, the, the Heil, the salvation, comes by Jesus Christ. The Kusero's house was known as the Golden Age. A huge sign advertising the Jehovah's Witness magazine was emblazoned in gold letters outside their home. Inside, the parents gave the children their love and their time, and they taught the Bible and music, lessons which would have a lifetime's impact.
Kusaros, then and now, firmly believe the creed of the Jehovah's Witnesses, that our world, now influenced by Satan, will soon be transformed into the 1,000-year reign of Christ promised in the Bible. The evil will die, whilst the good and faithful will be physically reborn into paradise. I was from morning to the evening visiting people who like to know what the Bible says about preaching work or missionary work. They like to receive me. Much of the literature distributed by the Kusaros came from the witnesses' headquarters in New York. In Germany, the witnesses were a very small sect of just 20,000 people, and yet Hitler saw the movement as a rival ideology to the Nazis. So he set out to seize their literature and wreck the organization. So where were the books and the literature? Where was here it Here also, here also, from there. Here. Under, under the stairs? Yes, da, from there, and also... Uh, up here. Yes. And how many times did the police come to the house? Oh, many, many times. And they hid them here? Here? Yes. Here, here waren die Steine. Here were the bones. Well, yeah, on the, on the roofs. And then the books here, uh, 10 meters long, here 10 meters, and the Bücher rein. And then we have the stones put in here, and we have the spinweb here. And here was a balcony, and there was another balcony. You have to go very carefully. So they came, how many times did you say? 18 times, 16, 17, 18. And they always searched in this area? Have not found the books. The Nazis weren't easily dissuaded. The Golden Age sign on the Kusro's house was blacked out. But although the witnesses had been officially banned, the family maintained their religious activities in secret. She said, Magdalena, you go behind three, four, meter behind me, you carry the Bible, that I have nothing in my hand, and she spoke with the people. And there were one man, I don't know, was he, uh, he was a stranger, he, he didn't belong to Butliff Springer, and he denounced us, he called the police. In, in 1936, six, the first time my mother was arrested to Paderborn, this was the, third, the first time. Franz and Hilda Kussero were among the hundreds of Jehovah's Witnesses arrested by the Gestapo in 1936. They were briefly reunited in 1937 when this last complete family photograph was taken. Later that year, their son Siegfried died in a swimming accident. His death signalled the end of the idyll. By now, most Germans were wallowing in nationalistic pride and revived economic fortune. Communists, gypsies, homosexuals, dissidents, the handicapped, and above all, the Jews, were hunted down, even in Bad Lipspringer. Today, the town memorialises its former Jewish residents. Little more than 50 years ago, they were hounding them out and baying for their blood. It seems a long while ago, for the moment, dissidents are tolerated. Jehovah's Witnesses can sell their magazine, The Watchtower, and openly recruit converts. In the 1930s, this street in Paderborn was dominated by the prison, and this is where the Kusaros were jailed. Witnesses began to lose their jobs and pensions. The Gestapo stepped up their surveillance but the Kusaro's garden was still supplying fresh produce. The three youngest members of the family were being well cared for. They were the next target. Yeah, das war einer der schwarzen Tage. Ich war zu der Zeit gerade krank. At that time, I was ill and didn't go to school. I was lying in bed here. 
Plötzlich kam ein Auto vorgefahren, Zivilisten, ich konnte das... Suddenly a car drove up. There seemed to be two civilians in it. I could see them from the window. Wir kamen forsch hier rein und haben uns dann... Ich musste aus dem Bett aufstehen, anziehen, auf, aufstehen, anziehen. They burst in and wanted me to go with them. They hesitated because I was ill and for appearance's sake took me to a doctor to see if I could be taken away. Ich musste dann mitfahren zum Arzt, rein pro forma, äh, ob ich mitfahren Then konnte. Then they collected my sister and brother from school and we left. Meine Schwestern, meine, meine Schwester und mein Bruder aus der Schule geholt und dann sind wir losgefahren. Denn äh, wir wurden aus der Schule herausgeholt. We were taken from school. My brother who was ill was collected from home. Und wir fuhren gemeinsam We were taken by two policemen to the orphanage in Dorsten nach Dorsten in das Erziehungsheim. Ich kann mich natürlich noch gut daran erinnern, wie ich mich I can still remember how I vomited all over the jacket of one of the policemen. It took a lot of effort to clean it up once the car stopped. Die Jacke wieder reinzubekommen. Hatte also Then the journey continued to Dorsten and the orphanage. Nach Dorsten in das Erziehungsheim. Am anderen Morgen mussten wir wieder ähm, mussten wir in the morning, he again told us to give the Hitler salute. And when we refused, he took us into a room, laid us across the table, and beat us black and blue. It was bad. We took a shower every evening. And when the female head of the house saw us, she made us bathe separately so that the other children would not see. It was very bad. When the Second World War began, the two eldest Cousero daughters, Anne-Marie and Valtraud, escaped surveillance and left to find jobs in Berlin. It was more difficult for their brothers. In December 1939, Wilhelm, after refusing military service, was thrown into jail. Dear parents, brothers and sisters, all of you know how much you mean to me and I am repeatedly reminded of this every time I look at our family photograph, how harmonious things always were at home. Nonetheless, above all else, we must love God as our Führer Jesus Christ commanded. If we stand up for him, he will reward us. As predominantly Aryan Germans, Jehovah's Witnesses were sometimes allowed the privilege of a Nazi trial. Later, Wilhelm's court-appointed lawyer, Dr. James Rohr, wrote to the family. I had long conversations with your son before his trial and admired his calm confidence of faith. He never wavered, although he was severely pressed from all quarters. He calmly accepted the announcement of the hour of his execution, refusing again to change his mind, that is, to abandon his faith and save his life. On the morning of the execution, I took his hand and said in consolation, Mr. Cusero, you have been wonderfully strong. Remain strong now. He squeezed my hand and smilingly replied, No, doctor, don't be troubled. I am gaining everlasting life. All this is only a change. He asked me to send you his greetings. He stood upright when facing death and was dead at once. Unable to browbeat the witnesses, the Nazis tried lies and subterfuge. With an elaborate ritual of deceit, they issued certificates and reports declaring that Wilhelm Cusero had died a hero's death fighting for Hitler and the Third Reich. For some unknown reason, the Nazis allowed the family to collect Wilhelm's body from Munster prison where he'd been shot. His sister, Waltraud, helped to arrange the funeral. It shocked me deep, but Wilhelm was true until the days. I have seen the body in uh, the little hall there, and uh, he was in a private suite or a suit, and uh, until here, Löcher. The bullet holes? Yeah, holes, and the blood was in, in the mouse. There was a big funeral with the secret police around and then 
with persons in uniform policemen. And uh, my brother Karl has said uh, some words. And then later, my brother Karl, because he spoke a, a few words in the prayer, uh, the Gestapo kept him. Karl, son number three, was the next arrested. He was brutally tortured in Dachau and Sachsenhausen concentration camps. In April 1941, the Gestapo swooped again. After a brief release from jail, France and Hilda Cousereau were re-arrested as were their daughters, Hildegard and Magdalena. Nazi tenants took over the house that once proclaimed the dawning of a golden age. The Cousereaux were sent to concentration camps where the witnesses were forced to wear distinctive insignia. The Jews wore a yellow star, the witnesses a purple triangle. When we went through the, through the concentration camp, we saw this purple triangle then I knew there's my sister. I said, hello, sister, how are you? What's your no name? Where you come from? The witnesses fared better in the camps than many prisoners. Absolute conviction in their faith and strict discipline helped their morale. Soon, Magdalena was joined at Ravensbrück by her mother and her sister, Hildegard. I saw my mother. I was so happy. And she told me everything, she was happy, and it was really good because I had swollen arms. I couldn't walk, I couldn't dress myself because of this sickness, it was rheuma or something. And my mother, she dressed me, she made my hair. Despite the evil and hardship at Ravensbrück, Frau Cousereau kept her faith. Her son Wilhelm had given his life for the faith, and younger brother Wolfgang, when called for military service, showed true Cousereau defiance. I was brought up as one of Jehovah's Witnesses according to God's word contained in the Holy Scriptures. The greatest and most holy law he gave mankind is, you shall love your God above all else and your neighbor as yourself. Other commandments read, you must not kill. Did our creator have all this written down for the trees? Just as Jesus Christ and his disciples were persecuted, so are God's people also persecuted today. I know for sure that if Jesus Christ were to live on earth today, he would be persecuted just as he was then. Wolfgang was beheaded on March the 28th, 1942. The night before, he wrote, My dear parents and my dear brothers and sisters, I shall leave you as your third son and brother early in the morning. Be not sad. The time will come when we shall be together again. Those who sow with tears will reap with joy. In James chapter 1, verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which Jehovah has promised to them that love him. In this faith and in this conviction, I go from you your son and brother, Wolfgang. By now, Waltraud had returned from Berlin and managed to find work in this florist shop in Paderborn. She was ordered to greet customers with the Heil Hitler salutation. She refused. After being given eight days to change her mind, she still refused and was arrested and imprisoned in Paderborn and told to make ammunition. I cannot walk for the war. This, I cannot walk, this for the war. My brother is killed, is shot. My other brother is beheaded. My three uh, sisters, uh, little ones, uh, the Gestapo have kept the... Uh, and my other brother in concentration camp, my mother in concentration camp, my two sisters, and also my father in prison. No, I cannot make it. By 1944, just one member of the Cousereau family was free, Anne-Marie, who was still in Berlin. Every week, I had with me in my apartment some persons 
and to have a Bible study. And, theref and uh, therefore, I was arrested. There must be a person who has observed us. The Nazis had rounded up every single member of the family. Some were dead, and the future for the rest uncertain. Yet they had a lifeline. Unlike all other prisoners, Jehovah's Witnesses could secure their release simply by signing a declaration that they'd abandoned their faith. Of the thousands arrested, only a handful did so. I was not ready to sign. I thought, uh, I have think over my, uh, my parents, my little children, uh, I mean my brothers and uh, my sisters, they are so faithful, so be obedient. Although we all were separated, we were all separated. And when I now am free, what should I do? Um, my conscience, I have thought it over. It is impossible to be unfaithful. How could I sign that I am not a witness? How could I leave my face? Never, never, never. In April 1945, Ravensbrück concentration camp was liberated. Hilda Cusero and her daughters were released. Imprisonment had strengthened their faith, and morally the witnesses had defeated the Nazis. Hilda was reunited with her husband, and with the surviving members of the family, rebuilt their lives. Although they never returned to their Golden Age home, they always remained faithful Jehovah's Witnesses. They were back in a Germany where the Protestant and Catholic churches were still the predominant religious groups. Despite rebellion and martyrdom by some believers, most church leaders had bowed the knee to the Nazis. Hitler, confirmed a Catholic, was never excommunicated. The church was silent, whilst millions of Jews and others died. Among the organized Christian religions in Germany, it was only the Jehovah's Witnesses who refused any compromise at all with Hitler and the Nazis. Like the first Christians, they too were reviled and ridiculed, and they were martyred. Among the millions who perished in the Holocaust, there were some 5,000 Jehovah's Witnesses. And yet those who survived still proclaimed, there is a purpose to all this. There is a God. <laughs> 